Hi and welcome to this tutorial about KST, a very fast open source cross-platform plotting tool. This tutorial explains advanced layouts and export options. To start I will load six vectors from this file here. Plot them against time offset, start at the beginning. So here I get my data. I can do shared access boxes, which are new functions and uh, function introduced for KST2. It didn't exist in KST1. If you click on this icon here, go from this plot to this one, it will link them across the x-axis. Similarly, you could link those two plots across the y-axis. It doesn't always work. Sometimes you have to do it manually here. So and see how you can save some uh, screen space by not repeating the labels which are always the same. If you are not satisfied with the axis boxes, you can break them easily using the keyboard shortcut B or the context menu. If I now load four more or six more vectors in a separate tab, I will show how I can organize, drop, uh, drag and drop them between the views and arrange the layout as I please. So to get into the layout mode you have to click on this icon here which changes the context menu. You have raise and lower options which allow you to select the Z order of the plots meaning which is plotted on top of which and you can then if you click on the plot you see the controls here which allow you to change the sizes. What you can also do is assuming you want to change the order in which they are plotted you could reorganize them and the nice thing is that KST will realign them on the grid if you're close enough and haven't changed the uh, sizes if you do clean up layout it will line them up nicely. If I'm in this plot, in this uh, view here, and I want to move, for instance, this one plot here, I can click on it, drag it onto the other view, and drop it here, where I want to have it. Notice that if you click twice on a plot, the controls change, and there you can rotate them. What you can of course do is change from the default grid layout, resize the plots to give them the size you want. Let's assume I want to plot four in the top row to give more room to another one in the bottom row. For instance this one which should occupy three columns. I can do it like this, or two and a half columns. I can also do inset plots in that I move this one and put it on top of the other one here. What I can also do when I have my plots here, I can use annotation objects. So I could put a label put it here for instance. I can also do a box. I can edit the properties with the context menu. I can do arrows. For instance I could say here this is an interesting event. So I will put the label here, showing exactly that. Now, you may ask what happens if I move the curve. So if I scroll the curve, in this case, you see that the interesting event in the arrow stay at a fixed position in a plot, which is not what we want. For that, you have an option. If you click on it here, lock position to data, 
you can also do the same for the arrow and now if I move the curve the objects will move along with the curve which is a very nice feature because, because it allows of course for quite interesting uh, use cases especially when you're dealing with live data which are moving around all the time the other two types of objects you can use are images I made it too small. I will make it a bit bigger. So you can have images, or you can also have SVG graphics, vector graphics, like the famous Ghost Creek Tiger which you can use here and which is of course uh, vector graphics if you zoom in on it oh no sorry you can zoom on objects but if you export it you will see that um, the tiger is a very sharp drawing we'll see it afterwards the last thing I wanted to show here regarding the label options is the way you can use a subset of latex symbols which are explained here in this dialog which allow for pretty much um, any type of text effect Greek letters, symbols you can also use vector elements, scalars and equations in the, in the plots, in the labels for instance, to illustrate this a bit here I could do like this and see how I can have various font effects. Now, assuming I have prepared a very nice plot I want to export, I can go to the file menu, export as image. There I will have the option of vector formats or bitmap formats. The vector formats are PDF, encapsulated, PostScript and SVG, the other ones being the uh, bitmap formats. So to start with I will export to PNG I can select the resolution here and what has to be done with the redimensioning of the window if it maintains the aspect ratio or not. If I hit OK, we'll produce two files which I can find here in my browser. One per view and if I look at the view 2 for instance here I will find my plot but notice that if I zoom text becomes unsharp because it's a low resolution bitmap export so could have done a higher resolution of course but I also have the option of exporting to vector graphic so if I now select PDF do the same export and open a PDF file here you can see that the tiger, if I zoom in, the tiger is very sharp, just as the lines, which are all, uh, or the text, which is all uh, plotted as a vector graphic. So, those were the options I wanted to show. You can have pretty much advanced layouts and uh, produce very high quality output for publications using KSD as I hope to have shown in this tutorial. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more tutorials. Bye bye.